topic tonight is texturing. Uh, and Tim gave a demonstration on piercing last month, and that was making holes in things. I'm just making dents. You know, so I'm, I'm not going all the way through. Hopefully. So I, you know, the, what we really want to do is think about is, you know, for most of us in here, we do some sort of a bowl, and you can use the texturing to go and make some sort of rim decoration or something around, you know, the perimeter of a particular piece or whatever. Uh, and what I like to do a lot now is real simple, is on the bottom of my plates or bowls or whatever, I make a little inset set of rings and I use the texturing to kind of highlight the bottom so that the bottom's got more interest. You know, it's not just, you know, your little signature on the bottom and a, you know, a, a circle where you, you try to blend in, you know, where the chucks used to, to be. Uh, so I'll pass this around, but the, just look, I don't worry about the top, just look at the back, but if you look at there, I, all I've done is I've taken a, it was a skew actually, you know, and I just took the point of the skew and made two concentric circles, and then I later filled that back in with the texturing, and that's what I'm going to show you, some of that texturing. And this is easy, easy, easy type of texturing to do, and really low expense, low cost. It's not a real high-end type of tool. Uh, I've got my 12-year-old Dremel here, and I actually prefer this when I do a lot of this type of uh, texturing than the expensive tools. Now I've got, this is called a thumb, but it's basically, it's, it's, I like it because it's battery operated and I can take it anywhere I want and I can, I can use it. And it, it doesn't have the high RPMs that uh, Tim was showing, the NSK, whatever it was, the, the different tools that he was using last month. But for texturing, you don't need that high speed. In fact, on this, and even on the Dremel, I only use it on level two most of the time out of five. So it's, it's not high, high volume. In fact, if you get too fast with the burrs, you get burning. And that's what happened on this type of bowl. And again, this was a skew again, made two, two uh, lines on it, two circles, and then I filled in. And this again was just using a round bead, and I'll show you a round burr, and I'll show you. But I, I was running it fast, and when you run it fast, you could, it burns as well as cuts. And that's why this is dark, and if you see some of them are a little bit lighter, some of it's because of the grain orientation uh, on the bowl itself. But uh, too fast burns. It's, you know, when you see the bottom of the bowl, you know, it's, it's a lot less color because of the way you, you're doing it. So I'll just pass that around too. Dave, are you doing that while the bowl is on the chuck or no, by hand? in my lap. Okay. You know, I, I put the rings obviously on there, but I, sure. I just hold it in my lap and I just go around with the tool. You know, because I, I finish everything. Everything's done and then I come back around and do the, uh, the texturing. <coughs> now there's a lot of bits uh, and I brought everything I got, not a lot, but the ones I like to use are these chisel ones you see up there at the top, or actually in the middle of your page. It says rotarychisel.com. These bits are $33, $34 a piece. What, it's hard to tell the shape. What shape is that really? Well, I'll show you in a okay. minute, but there's, there's one that's just a round. You okay. know, there's one that's just a... a Single turn, slot. Turn your display a little bit so we can see it up here. Your, your no, stand. Uh, turn your stand. Yeah. This there? Yeah, turn. Just, no, just turn. Yeah, just turn. So, oh, to yeah, the camera. gotcha. There's one that's like a V cut. Oh. There's another one that's a, uh, it's just a square block. And there's another one that's got three lines. It's like a W shape. There's three, three little uh, pieces on there. You know, in, on the W one, they're all at different plane, and on the, the V one, they're all on the same plane, so they all cut in the same spot. You use those in the Dremel? I use that in the Dremel. 
In fact, I prefer it in the Dremel than this because the Dremel's got more torque. And it just <coughs> sends the work a little bit better. It's just going through some of the bits. Uh, this one here is this style here. I don't know if we can see that either. Steven. <laughs> Steven, put a picture on this, please. These are those diamond bits. They don't know they're diamond coated or whatever. And I'll tell you from texturing, they don't work. They're really cheap, but they don't work. And what happens is that the top of this, it just burned right off, you know, because you're, you're doing it. And the, the, these are used when you're doing carving. You know, when you're carving a three-dimensional more of a shape, and they're a sander. You slow them way down. It's just like sanding. You don't want to go fast. You've got to go really slow, and it's to take the little bumps off. All right? So unless that's what you're looking for, they're not, you're not going it, to, it's a waste of money to, to buy them to try and do any kind of texturing on your turn. These are the bits that I use the most, right across here. You see those? And most of them I put on the bottom of the, the sheet there. I bought those at uh, Woodcarver Supply, which is this catalog. All right. Tree line also has uh, a we pretty good selection. Now. Oh, I can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tree line has the same types of stuff, but I've got the part numbers that I have for those particular tools. You know, so if you looked them up online or whatever, you could get the actual uh, bits that I used up here. This one here, again, I painted it after the fact. I had it all done. I textured it, and I'm going to try putting some paint on it to see if it would look better. I liked it better before the paint, but it is what it is. <laughs> now it's got paint. But basically all I took was a, a small round bit, the smallest round bit that I've got on there, which is this little, where is it, this little bitty guy right here. You know, it's, it's a really little bit, and all I did is I took it and I just scribbled. <laughs> And if you do that, the surface starts to look like leather. And so it's kind of a, it, it's really fast, it's really easy. I'll, try, I'll show you if I get a chance down here when I'm doing some stuff. Mm -hmm. Some other tricks to know is, you know, the Dremel, they come with those little discs. You know, you screw on the end. The little cut that, off disc. The little cut off disc. They make nice long flowing lines if you want to just do something like that on a, a particular thing. But what's also nice is you can take the screw out and you get those little uh, kitchen pads, you know, you use scrubbies or you get the ones you can buy for sanding or whatever and you just cut them and you put a little hole down through the middle and you screw them on there and that's a real nice sander when you want to go and clean that up and it's, all, it's free, you know, I mean, the, the little bit of piece here, you know, you can cut it off your wife's and she'll never even know the missing. <laughs> <laughs> they last a long time. Is that scotch brake? This is a scotch brake type pad, yeah. We won't quote you on that. Now, she knows I've taken them. <laughs> the other thing you can do is you take the screw and you take get rid of the screw. Well, you, you save it. But you take the screw and then you take double-sided tape and you take a hole punch and you punch a hole and then you... Put the on the tip, uh, the end of that piece. You do the same thing with a piece of sandpaper, and you stick that on the other side of the tape. And now you've got something that spins around into a little sander. And I'll tell you, that works really nice to clean up things too. And again, it's you know, you, a little piece of tape like that lasts you for a month. You know what I mean? It, it does. It does. You don't need much. Sixty grit. Huh? Sixty grit. Yeah, 80, 80. I don't do 60, I do 80. But, you know, again, it's... never gets above 60. <laughs> but, that, you know, that, that's a neat little trick as far as being able to use to, to touch up little sanding type areas, too. Another one that you can use, and this one's not very effective, but it's the same concept, is the little wire brushes. You can use those and actually... Uh, John Jordan, 
he makes those vases and they're, they're, they kind of have the grooves and stuff on them. And then they have a texture on them. It's a wire brush. It looks like he's done all this stuff. He puts a little wire brush in his uh, drill press or in his lathe. And he just takes his piece and he just goes like this. <laughs> and he's got beautiful texture, you know, all around the sides. It doesn't take very long at all. Uh, this one's a little too soft. I've tried it and all it does is polish. You know, it doesn't, doesn't do much in the texturing area. So the wire brush that John, that Jordan uses, that's it's it's more of a it, yeah, it's a much stiffer, like, coarser. A, a metal cleaning it's a metal, it's a metal brush, you know, for weld cleanup or something to that effect. So Mike would have one probably to could borrow. <laughs> <laughs> so what I've done is I try to figure out what I could do to just show quickly some basic techniques. So I've created these plates. And you can see they all look about the same, a little scaled up, scaled down. And that's because I use Corel Draw, and I actually drew my lines with my laser. So they all, you know, I just put them under there, and they made the lines and everything was nice. Uh, but you don't have to use the laser. If you use, and what I do is I use this contact paper. It's just clear contact paper. You know, you can buy it at all the, you can get it at Bed Bath & Beyond. I mean, you can get it all over the place. Any of the craft places and stuff, it's, you know, pretty standard stuff. Uh, it's clear, and you put it on, and what I do is I put it on the whole front side for these particular devices, or these particular pieces. And then what I've done is, on some of them, you know, I've made it nice and black, and then on this one, Instead of making it black here, I filled it in with pyrography. I burned it. But on this side, what I did is I left it raw. And you'll see that this, this here, it looks a little bit different in color, and it is. And what I did is I dusted it with a can of spray paint. Just a little bit. Just so that it would have a contrast with the lines that are you know, the, the areas that you're going to texture. So it, it, it's, and it's really simple. You can, the, the dark ones, I'll have to have each one of these back for when I do my, my demo because I need the thing. But on the dark ones, I would paint it dark, you know, with the paint. But all I've done is I've, I've taken that mat, and like I say, I, I cut it with the laser, but you know, you use an X-Acto knife, and you can do the same thing, putting a piece of paper for some sort of pattern, and then cutting through that particular uh, design as well. But all you do is you take that, and you just peel off those lines. I'm going to do the lines on this one. As you see, this stuff is... So you cut that out with exactly knife. You can you cut put this, the whole thing on there first. I put the whole thing out. on there, and then you cut it with an exacto knife. You know, I, I admit I use the laser, yeah. but I mean you just use it, and you can take a printed paper, put it right over there, tape that down, and cut right through that paper and your material below, and it will give you the same. I mean, this stuff cuts like butter. It's yeah. really, yeah. it's really easy to cut. So I'll. Just take off these. I'm just taking off the center, the same. So I'm basically taking off, you know, anything that's black on the, that particular one here in the front, you take it off. Now I'm not going to go as dark this time. But again, you don't have to spray it real deep. If you just, and I'm not going to do anything more than that, just kind of dust over it a little bit, and I'm not going to clean my spray can here. But it'll dry really fast, but now when you peel this off, you can see you've got that basic shape. So, I mean, it, it takes seconds really 
you know, to do that. And depending on what color you use or, you know, and, and you don't have to use paint. You can use stains, too. Now, it's kind of nice because the stain comes out or the paint comes out of the can. So it's, it's $3 or $4 at, you know, Walmart or whatever. You don't have to have fancy stuff. I have a uh, air gun, you know, the air... Airbrush. Airbrush, thank you. An airbrush, and you can put stains in that, you know, and, and do the same type of thing. But there, you can use spray lacquer. You could use all, you know, you can use just about anything you want. It doesn't matter to, to make that basic pattern. And then, you keep talking. Tim's got longer legs than I couldn't even. <laughs> so then, Again, it's pretty bad when you can't even plug something in. Now, the one thing I wanted to point out is in that handout that's, that came out, these chisel tools that are there, they're the 100, they show the 101 because that's the video or the graphic I could pull off the web. But the ones I'm using are 100. There's a 100, there's a 101, there's a 102, and they get bigger and bigger. So they get some big honking tools that cost like 80 bucks a piece, you know what I mean, to some of the big pieces. But they're, they're 30 bucks, they'll last forever. I mean, you get one, and if I was to get one, I, I probably would get the, the V cut. And that's the one I've used the most, to be honest with you. But again, we'll start with that V-cut one. And these are, I think they're an eighth of an inch, you know, the, uh, the collets. But some of the other bits, they're smaller. They're 3 sixteenths or even the smaller one that uh, Tim was using, you know, from the dentist tools or whatever. And what you do is you buy these little collets. And you basically stick that in and your tool fits goes into. This is the one for those little dental ones. This is the one I'll use a little bit later. You get that from Dremel? No, you can get them probably from Dremel. I got these from Woodcarver Supply. You know, they're, they're a few dollars, but the thing is, you gotta be really careful. They got legs, and they like to play hide and seek. <laughs> they, they just disappear. Uh, I leave them in the tool, and I'm looking all over this place, you know. And, and it's like, you know, it's, it's right there. Uh, but anyways, I put a pencil in my pocket, and and I'll go all day, and I'll like, and I'll come home, and I'll have find three pencils in my pocket. You know <laughs> so again, with this one, we had done the center part was the uh, just kind of little lines. So I'm just going to kind of start. I'm not going to do the whole piece tonight, but literally. In about a half an hour, 45 minutes, I can texture that. So it doesn't take long. You'd be surprised. Now, this particular piece, you know, Nick had made a comment that it was so much lighter than the other one. This one actually is a 100-plus-year-old planed piece of oak. I did a refurbishment on a house, and it was built in 1919 or whatever, and it had some of the original shelving in one of the bookcases or whatever, and I salvaged all the wood, but it wasn't good enough to be able to use for another house or anything, so I've turned it into lots of little projects or whatever. Uh, but I had an oak one, I had a maple one, and I had this the, the bobinga or whatever, and that one was a lot of fun. That, that bobinga really textured nicely. I got a piece of cherry I'm going to work on tonight. So if we go, again, I'm only on two out of the five, so I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm down around that level. And for me, I just take my thumb and I put it right in here. Thank you. 
So all I look towards the other end of the table. Way. So he can get a closer deal on the uh, camera. Is that better? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you get closer than that? Can I get closer to him? Yeah, no, I meant to come. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 There you go. Oh, This is the V cut one, yes. So you can see all I'm doing is making little grooves. And you can try and make it so it looks like it's flowing around your space. So the W cut, does that make like two old grooves then? Yeah, I'll show you in a minute. Okay. I'll tell you that W cut, it's aggressive. No. Okay. I did, you know, on the ones that are over there. I'm not being near as careful know, up here, but, but that's your idea. my idea was is to flow, make it get the flow. make it look like there's a But it's still it's still random though. Yeah, it's just random. But you are going to try to go in a certain direction. You know, so again you can see it doesn't take long. I didn't do it as detailed as some of the other pieces, but you know, you can, you know, come up with that particular type of texture pretty fast. <laughs> then the next one. Dave, show that up to him again. Right there. The angle. Show it. There, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Up there. Thank you. Yeah, there you go. It won't stay there, it'll fall on the floor. But. <laughs> Next one we'll do is the, the bigger ball. Yeah, that's good right there. there you go. And this one's got the... <laughs> you got it. Now Dave, do you sand over that a little bit when you get done? Or? That little brush. Scotch. Did you hear Dave? Scotch Bright. The Scotch Bright. Okay. I just put that in there and I just, you know, kind of real lightly go over the top of it. And it takes all the little fuzzies or whatever out of it. Yeah. We're using your thumb because it tends to travel. Yes. What you'll, you'll, I'm left-handed, so it, it, this one, this is what works for me. Being right-handed, you you may actually find that you know you put a finger out like this, you know, to to support it so that it doesn't want to push. It, it doesn't. I mean, it wants to. The, the V cut's not too bad. The W cut, because you got three of them coming across there, it tends to want to walk a little bit. So you got to be a little bit more careful with that. So, on the ball, again, the other thing with the ball is, is it's tempting to want to come in like this, you know, as your or with the smaller one, you know, you're you're thinking you're going to come in like this. But it's just like doing the bottom of your bowl. When you get to that very center of the bottom, it's not moving very fast, right? It's the same thing with this bit. When you get to the top part of that tool, it doesn't cut much. So you really want to come down and cut it on that side of the, the tool. So you'll, you'll go from the, the center forward, or sometimes even you can get a little be on this side of the center line as you go down and through. <clears throat> but again, I use the, uh, and the other thing is these will clog up, and I just have a, a little wire brush that's uh, copper, you know, it, and I use that, and I just periodically go through and I clean them, and then they're, I've used these burrs a long time, and that copper brush hasn't done anything to disturb them, so. So again, you do the same thing. And depending on how you close you put them. I've done a lot of sheetrock work with this particular Dremel, so it, it complains every once in a while. <laughs> And again, I'm not going to...
I'm not going to go through the whole piece, but you get a sense of, you know, you've got the, uh, the round mm. textures. Now you can do is again, you take that same type of burr and you can use the smaller ones. But if you just take it, and go, you know, just kind of random pieces or whatever. When you get it, you go through it with the, uh, the light sandpaper, it gives you that brain corally type of a look or whatever. Uh, but again, it's not, it's not difficult. Is what I'm trying to say is, you know, it, and these burrs, these round burrs, they're like 10 bucks. You know, so they're not, they're not crazy expensive. Uh, and like I say, they last a long time. But there's lots of different things you can do with the, uh, each of the different contours. And let's see. Is that one a cylindrical one? Or it's hard to see the shape. Which one? The cylindrical? Is there this one here? Is there, well, I'm looking at the picture here. Yeah, this, this I'm just one's wondering what you do with that. Anything unique? Well, I'll show you. <coughs> I'm going to do it over on this other piece for now. But, uh, but this particular piece, what I do is I use the top edge and I come in like this and you'll get a, a flat, it's kind of almost kind of a, a, a triangular shape. Mm. Okay. As you can kind of see they're kind of these little domes. The kind of a little dome type of a, uh, a shape. And they, they've got these uh, burrs, that I did it on this one over here, and I thought it had some pretty neat characteristics. And this is one of those, uh, let's see, this one. And if you go into these, what do you call these? Christmas trees. Yeah, saber, saber tooth. Those, those, those green and yellow carving type tooths, they're real coarse. And they're meant by carvers to <coughs> remove material and then they get to the smaller burrs and then they get to the diamond burrs, you know, to get to their shape. But if you look at this particular plate, the center ones here is that particular shape. It, it, it gives it extra texture. It gives it extra uh... And what that does is it goes around, you'll see, but on this particular one, because it's got that rough texture in the, the piece itself, mm -hmm. each of your shapes picks up all those little lines that are inside it as well. You know, so you get the extra, it's like a texture inside the texture. You know, so you can get those saber tooth pieces, you know, they come in all different types of shapes and stuff. You, know, you could do the same thing with them, but instead of a smooth ball, you get that rough ball and it just gives you a different type of a look. So, so everything you do is, is random, I assume? Too, I do mostly too random. Too tough to keep a pattern, probably? No, in the, in the, with the ball ones, mm -hmm. I've tried a couple of things where, you know, you, you try and, like, instead of using, like, the laser line, yeah. you just draw a line with a pencil, mm -hmm. and then you outline it with that ball, go all the way around the edge, right okay. up to that pencil line, okay. and real tight together, and that looks pretty good too. Okay. You know, so you don't have to, like I say, you, you don't have to use the, the laser or the X-Acto knife to cut those. You could just draw a line and then texture up to that line. 
and it works pretty good too. One of your other pieces, I don't know if it's the Domingo one, but your your colored circle in the center and to the outer, is that pyrograph? Which one? I think it's a Bobingo. The Bobingo Who's got the Bobingo plate? Or even that one there. The that Just one pass dark it back in the center? Yeah, the, that, that dark in the center and the dark out here, yeah. a lot of times I've, I've pyrographied those. This one here, I think. Yeah, let me see. Yeah. How did you get the, the lines? Though? They're smooth. You, they look like they're sanded. When you say the lines, these. No, that's just that's just as turned. I haven't put any finish on these or anything, right. obviously. But that was how it was. That's how it was, and then underneath the I had clear I left the little lines of copper. I pulled off the big areas where I textured, and I dusted it with white. So this is actually dusted with white. See how the difference is on that side? Right. But how did you keep the lines? This line? No. The, the curve. This is, yeah. How did you get those smooth then? With everything else around it all textured? Because he sanded, sanded I sanded the, the whole disc, disc just like I did this disc. thing. Okay. Then lasered it. Then I put the, the contact paper on it, lasered it, pulled off, in that case, the part I was going to texture and dusted it with white. When I did that, then I took off the, the thin lines and let them lay bare and they look polished like right, this. Right. Whereas because I had that white dust on this other part, it gave it that feeling that those were smooth and sanded and polished but they were done before. And then I just did exactly what I was doing on this one, you know, to make all the different patterns. Dave, does the contact leave any adhesive residue? I, I, I've never seen it, no. Okay. <coughs> it's a pretty low it, it, That's, it, that's it, like a shelf liner, isn't it? This is a shelf liner type yeah, thing. It's yeah. really low, low tack. Yeah. Yeah. Duct tape. <coughs> no, it's not duct tape. <laughs> I mean, this is the... The material, you know, so it's not. Then I want to do that W one. I thought you laid it on your newspaper. Yeah, that was the V one, wasn't it? No, I thought you were looking for the wrench. Yeah, I got the wrench in my hand. But this yeah. I've done it so many times I still turn the chuck the wrong way. That's because you work on a lathe. <laughs> so on this this particular one, it's it's this W. But again, you can see on this texture plate that I had here, this was the W stuff. I can't see the TV, so I don't know if you're seeing anything or not. Just but give them a little time to get there. Yeah. Yeah. This, was, this was the, and I cross-hatched with the W to get that particular oh, shape yeah. there. This one was the V-cut, and I kind of cross-hatched that. So again, it's just, you take the same tools and you just decide, oh, I'm going to do, you know, tic-tac-toe, or I'm going to do, you know, angles, or, you know, I mean, it, they all come out a little bit different, the way you do those. Uh, you know, here was, this, this little skinny one here was a, a real pointed one, the little pointed one. And this was that uh, cylinder one that we had, you know, you would, we had done before. You know, so this was kind of, this is just kind of a piece that I was using for practicing. But And all that fuzz on the bottom there, well clean off with just the... Uh... Yeah, I'll show you before we, we stop here. But, the, but this one, like I say, it likes to wander. And you, you got that? <laughs> Uh, 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 uh.
If I didn't have my thumb, it would be a disaster. And going across the grain is a lot more difficult than going with the grain as far as it wants to wants to run. See? So you gotta kinda use a little bit of a lighter touch. But depending on how you want your pattern to look, and that's how I did the the, one of those plates had all that cross hatching on it or whatever. And I like the look, but you got to be really careful because you can, in a split second, you've got this. I'll show you. <laughs> you know, in a split second, you know, you, you know, instead of a light touch, all of a sudden it does, you got, ah. You know, I've got this real deep. You know, type of groove that suddenly, that kind of suddenly showed up. That never happens to you, though, right? Well, you'll, if you look closely on each of these pieces, <laughs> this one here, there's a couple. There's one right there. I was like, ah! I even touch my line a little bit, you know. But if you stop pointing those out to us, we won't see them. You realize exactly, exactly right. But that we're gonna know, look now. But you know, I did I, I did this side first, the front. Then I did the back because I was just like I'm just gonna keep practicing. You know, I just put it back on the lathe or on the uh, the laser and burned it again. You know, when I got the same pattern, I just lined it up so they'd be fairly the same. And I think my back, my <coughs> texturing was actually. You know, you get better as you go. You know, it got better uh, as you went. So. Dave, you're showing all face grain. What about on end grain? Well, let's try it. <laughs> I'm not going to use it with my W. That's too bad. <laughs> right. That's a bad plan. That's a disaster waiting to happen. You want to try a ball? Do you want to try? Something simple. Yeah. Yeah. Ball. Ball is simple. Have you tried this on bowls? Or yeah, like that one. There's a couple of bowls, or there's two bowls or whatever, they're over there. I had done that on this, the side, you know, rim. Works just just fine. And you don't notice the difference between side grain? No, grain what, grain. What, what, what you will is depending on your your tool and how fast you're going one burns more than the other but if you keep your tool at a slower speed and take your time then you won't get much burning at all and it's pretty uniform so if you want burning just up there but <laughs> so it's not doing it here but <laughs> the other the other thing that I got burning was is when your tool gets loaded up a little bit if you don't take your you know your brush. copper brush or whatever, yeah. then it burns. Mm -hmm. If you if you, then you clean it up. If you start it and it starts burning, you're like, mm, do I clean it, or and go back over where I've already done it, or do I just leave it and let them, the rest of them be burned? Or if you have a burr that's that's old, and, well well used, it'll probably start to take the edge off, which will create right. more friction. And there. and the other thing is this is cherry, and it. Burns. Well, it, it cuts nicer. Maple burns because it's so much harder. I mean, the hard maple. You know, it, it's so much harder that it. I've had more burning than than the maple. But let's take a piece here. Okay, so this would be our end grain. See, that same one didn't burn over here. But you can, you know, you can pretty much go anywhere you want with it. You can see the ingrain on the poles that you turn. Yeah, it's the same, same thing. Now, when I use the bottom of my, you know, when I do the around the bottom, I just use this little bitty ball and I just do the same thing. You know, I did it with this, 
this outer edge of these plates, the, the out, these outer edges are the small ball, you know, where this is the larger one. So again, if, you know, while you're looking around the last few minutes or whatever, you want to come up and you want to make some chips or whatever, I won't clean up until uh, you start doing the raffle or whatever so that you've got the, you know, a few minutes to, to kind of come up and look. It's not hard. It may not be for you. That's fine. You know, you don't have to use the paint. You don't have to use, you know, the other things. It just worked for what I was doing with these particular pieces here. Uh, and <coughs> I'll be honest with you, I hadn't done anything like this until a month ago. And I said, you know, I, I, I wanted to figure out what I could do that would show lots of different textures on a, a single piece. And that's why I, you know, I just grabbed different pieces that I had throughout the shop. And you can go over to our friends over there at Johnson's and they've got all kinds of boards. You know, you just cut them off into squares and you've got your, you got a disc to play with anyways. So, so what kind of finish will you put on top of this? These I'm not going to put a finish on them at all. And your, your dusting. Oh yeah, I was going to show you that. Is that enamel or a lacquer if you're going to, you know, for compatible finishes, would you want you, to stick you, with you, lacquers or does it matter? As long as you don't get something that doesn't doesn't it's not compatible with right. the other one. I guess you're okay. You know, it's no different than you know when we use multiple finishes. But when you use these spray paints, you can put any kind of finish over those that I've seen. You know, they're pretty much impervious to it. You know, and I always would spray a light coat of whatever it was first, so that you get a little bit of a, a sealing before you go and do the other. Like I, when I do some of this stuff, I won't. I use a lot of wipe on poly. Mm -hmm. I won't do the first coat with the wipe on poly. I'll just dust it with the uh, the spray poly, and let it just sit. You know that first coat seals and seals it, and so that way you come by the next coat. You don't have to worry about anything. I think uh, the vast running. majority of the spray cans you're going to find in the hardware stores are going to be in a, in, going to be enamels. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very seldom going to see spray lacquers except clear. Yeah, black. I, I've got a bunch of black lacquer, spray lacquer I've got, but but yeah, most of it's clear or black. But you can buy that spray lacquer in any. If you go online, you can find all kinds of it. But so again, what I do with these, this again, you don't have to have it very fast, and then I'll just. <coughs> With that uh, scotch pad. Scotch pad. Smooth it out. And it just takes any of the little fuzzies. You know, these these V's and the uh, you know the the rounds and stuff. The rounds a little bit they take, but these these W's and stuff they 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 need it. You know because there's a lot more little slivers uh, that come up with that. But you know again it's just. Takes it right off. No pressure, you know, you just kind of let it, you know, the tool itself go right over and it cleans it up real, real fast. All right, Tim, back to you. Any hey, questions? Thank you, Dave. Yeah. Thank you. And yes, I brought a vacuum cleaner, it's in my car. <laughs>